Welcome to Happy Homes and Gardens. I'm your host. My name is Daphne Royce. I am a rose broker, architecture, and interior designer. The use of oriental rocks has thousands of years of history and originally originated in North Africa and the Middle East. Turkey is famous for their hand-woven rocks and oriental carpets. Wogi Tekker and his family have operated the Istanbul rock business for five generations in Turkey and Silicon Valley. Today, Ogi will share all you need to know about oriental rocks. Welcome, Ogi. Hello, how are you, Daphne? I'm doing good, how about you? I'm good, happy casual Friday to our listeners. Uh, I am wearing jeans and a shirt, so okay. it's sunny, beautiful day in Mount Park. California. Yes, finally we're done with the rain. And uh, I'm here to hopefully educate you guys and uh, give you some insight of Ami rugs, carpets, etc. Love to. You have a beautiful storefront. Thank we would love to hear what you have to tell us about rugs. Well, shoot the questions right away. I'll try to be brief and uh, detailed as possible. Okay. All right. Tell us who you are and how did you start Istanbul Rock? Okay. So my name is Ogi. And um, this is a family business that was started by my great grandfather. Uh, we were originally from Gaziantep, close to the border of Syria, Iran, and um, eventually we made our way to Istanbul. Uh, my dad really took on the role of expanding into the United States eventually, and we have three showrooms now, um, and I. Started to kind of really help out in the last three years, uh, which um, I like to think I'm a little bit more aggressive. So we opened two more stores within three years. And yeah, here we are today in the family business. Uh, we call it curse and uh, a blessing. So that's why I am. <laughs> Great. And what is the rock and carpet? Okay, so uh, rugs are, okay, the main difference between a rug and carpet is the labor and the material used. Uh, when people refer to carpets, they're referring to machine-made um, or hand-tufted um, process. So it's a lot more easier and faster to do. And when people talk about rugs, more specifically oriental rugs, they're talking about handmade pieces that are from originating from the Middle East. Um, you know, these are patterns, colors, processes, techniques that's been used for generations on generations, and it is still being used today, but unfortunately it is a dying art as um, the world is evolving, so, yeah. What are the differences between hand woving and mm -hmm. machine made rugs? So if you want a, a rug that's going to last your lifetime, you want to go with the rug. And um, the reason being is oriental rugs, and you can go into more specific detail, which I'm sure we will, but the oriental rugs, it's made from better material. So what I'm referring to is we use real wool, vegetable dye, they are 100% vegetable dye, real wool, it's knotted by hand. Usually, depending on the number of weavers per loom, and per loom is where the rug is being made, like an eight by 10 rug, it can take between four to eight months. And some rugs, like an eight by 10 that are fine, what we describe it as knots per square inch, can take up to over two years. It just depends on how much of the quality you're looking for. You can have a rug that's 200 knots per square inch, which is considered fine, or you can have a rug that's 900 knots per square inch. Usually these are silk pieces and they can go for hundred thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, when you're looking at machine-made carpet, you're, you're looking at materials that are usually band-made, um, wall-to-wall -wall carpets and these rugs tend to only last a couple of years um, 
if I you try to get them washed or cleaned, they usually the glue starts coming off. It can cause a lot of health issues. It's one thing that people really don't consider uh, when you have these rugs um, and you start using them and after a couple of years, they start to deteriorate. Um, versus a handmade rug, it's gonna, it's an heirloom piece. It's gonna be passed down from generation to generation. And um, every couple of years, if you just do one professionally, you can wash or look brand new, let's say. Um, but machine made carpet takes about a day to make uh, and it can vary. Um, that's the best way to describe it, I think. Wow, that's amazing that how long it takes to make one rug. Yeah. And I look at, at the amount of the rugs in your store. That yeah. takes like a decade <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, we work with a lot of looms. We have family. The business is actually, uh, I don't want to call it monopolized, but um, we have weavers that is like cousins of our cousin, you know, so these rugs are constantly being produced throughout the year. Usually this is seasonal, we say, um, but it is a dying art. And uh, one of the jokes I, I tell my clients and my friends is, you know, I don't have a 401k savings. I don't have a retirement plan. My retirement plan is all of those rugs sitting at the stores, you know, <laughs> because that's all I just do. I just keep buying more and more because I know that eventually everything is going to go to machine making and the quality is not not the same. Is it hard to find the skill people to make those rugs now? Yeah, so currently the hub spot for handmade rugs are being made in India. Um, if you look at the market today, if you look at some of the bigger retail stores, um, inter home design stores, I'm just gonna give her a name, like Crate and Barrel or uh, restoration hardware you know these are really famous popular stores they are now also contain area rugs or handmade rugs plus machine made rugs um, but the difference is that uh, the workmanship and what this what I mean by workmanship is the knots per square inch so when you look at the back of the rug the clearer the image the better um, Usually, the rugs that are being imported from India are between 50 to 80 knots per square inch versus Iranian Persian rugs or Turkish rugs, even Afghan rugs, um, they're 150 minimum knots per square inch, which is about three times more workmanship, more um, artful. I guess that's the same. You know, when you look at it on the floor, you can see the difference. The knots is produced better pattern, or better quality, mm -hmm. and higher on price. Exactly. So the um, this is how I describe to husbands. You know, imagine having an HD TV, 4K TV, and 8K resolution TV. Right. So you want the 8K resolution TV because it's a lot more clear. It's like crystal clear. This can be on the rugs as well. Um, the workmanship on these rugs, so for example, if you put an 8K resolution rug, um, let's just put it at 200 knots per square inch, um, it's gonna take one year, let's be a little bit more conservative, one point, one and a half years, versus the same rug that's 50 knots per square inch, three months, four months, maybe even less. Um, and also the material being used, you want to have, you want to deal, you want to buy rugs that people really understand. And I think the rug industry is for the Middle Easterners only. <laughs> That's a joke I make as well. It's because we come from it. Um, but the material also makes a huge difference. You want to make sure there's a quality control. You want to make sure that it's being... 100% vegetable dye. You don't want to have a little bit of chrome dyes or, you know, man-made dyes. Um, so you really want to work with someone that know what they're doing and their reputation and been around for a long time. Middle East, that you <laughs> remind me of the Aladdin with the... Aladdin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. What about the main material sources come from? Like the silk, cotton? Are they sourced locally? Um, so the rugs, so right now there is a big issue with the silk particularly. Um, the silk carpets today, it, silk is a very loose used term. Now there's what they call man-made silk or viscose silk. Um, these are made from different types of materials like bamboo, uh, bamboo fibers, banana fibers, and they mix it with sugar and high pressure and heat to kind of make it look really shiny, soft. Uh, but that's artificial. That's not from the silk one. Exactly. It's not from the cocoon. So um, most of these new rugs, they tend to go for modern pieces. So more abstract for new designer homes or like what designers use. And designers all stay away from this material because if you spill something on it, it's going to make, it's, it's very difficult to get rid of. Uh, it's not durable. Um, usually silk you want it from a cocoon mm -hmm. and one cocoon can go up to one and a half mile long that's what we say and um it's a lot more difficult to make because you have to hand spin it and you have to get a lot of cocoons to uh use the material and make a really incredible silk carpet in turkey uh today even in iran um it's becoming less and less popular to produce these silk rugs. So like a two by three silk rug in Turkey, for example, is five, six thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, we're talking two feet by three feet. What do people use for two feet by three feet? Um, put it on the wall. Okay. Um, some people can afford to buy, you know, eight by ten, six by nine, five by seven. Just it's, it's a... It's a good way to kind of have art, you know, it's, um, it's a dying art. And these pieces, if you have a really good quality, high-end piece, they always go up in value because it becomes more rare and rare. Okay. Were you taking care of the silk rocks mm -hmm. and also other materials? Are they have the same method of cleaning? So if you have a real silk rug, um, it's actually really durable. People have the tendency to think this the other way around, but you know, back in the day, people used silk to cut marble. Parachutes are made from silk. Um, sails are made from silk, so they're actually really durable. They use and wool and silk have the same method of the wash process. But one thing you want to be careful of is not to hang these pieces. You always want to sun dry it. One of the issues that we see often today is when People want to get their rugs clean, you know, they just call anyone and there's a big price variation. You know, people, oh, I got my rug washed for $200. And then some people will say, oh, I got my rug washed for $900. And the reason being is it's a completely different process. With the $200 guy, for example, what he's or she is or they're doing is, I call it like an assembly line, you know, they're just getting the rug wet, putting the rug shampoo, a couple of brushes, and then they hang the rug to dry and they are using heaters. The issue with that is you can cause the material to go yellow, especially viscose, viscose rugs. Um, if you put high intense heat, you will cause it to go yellow. Um, usually you want to put it out in the sun and just let it dry naturally. And you don't want to hang the rug so you don't want it to get crooked. Okay. You don't want to hurt the frame of the, the rug. Okay. So. You remind me a couple of questions. You mentioned earlier about the artificial silk. Mm -hmm. Do they actually list as silk as a material? So would they list something else? Um, they can. So uh, bamboo silk, it's not bad. It's It just depends on your supplier or the maker. What I mean by that is you can mix it with cotton. You can mix it with real silk. It's just, it comes down to the chemistry of it, the percentages, what percentage of it is real silk, what percentage of it is cotton, what percentage of it um, um, is bamboo fiber. It, 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 and nobody knows, the general public doesn't know, the rug buyer doesn't know. Now the retailers, you know, they kind of get an idea they know, um, 
usually you want like a 70-30. Mm -hmm. Those 10, you know, 70% um, can be real silk and 30% can be cotton, but you can break it down. Um, but it just varies on your supplier or if you're producing it, you know, what is what is the links that you're going to make sure that your clients are happy. Okay. And also my other question is about the knots. Mm -hmm. Are they create different kind of pattern? Mm -hmm. But how many different kind of patterns out there? Yeah, so there is like millions of patterns out there, right? So when you're thinking about in the United States, when people think of Oriental rugs, they think Persian rugs. Um, and they think Persian rugs are the best rugs. And I'm Turkish, so people like it. So are Turkish rugs better than Persian rugs or Persian? I, I this is I say the rug that sells is the best rug, right? The the rug that my clients like are the best rug. But one of the um, one of the differences is that Turkish knots are symmetrical knotting, mm -hmm. and Persian knots are asymmetrical knotting. It's both double knots, but the weave. Um, the weave technique is very extremely difficult to explain over, but if you guys Google, if they're willing to Google our listeners, they can really see the difference of the double knots because Turkish um, symmetrical knot, both of the ends of the fiber are always looking up on the rug, okay? With the Persian rug, it's only one of the fibers looking up. So when they come out of the loom, Persian rugs tend to look finer. But the difference between the Turkish rug is that as you use it, they get finer and finer because the warp and the weft are starting to tug at each other. So that's the main difference. Um, now, there's a, I can say that Turkish knotting is what we also call Gordic knot. And in St. Petersburg, Russia today, the oldest existing rug uh, is placed there and it's from the Gordic knot, which is also called the Turkish knot. So when I approach it scientifically, knowing that a rug exists that's 2,500 years old, um, I say Turkish rugs are better. <laughs> but again, it's it's on your personal taste and preference. Okay. Let's talk about patterns. Okay. For now, a lot of people like to have this very modern looking mm -hmm. carpet. Are they using the same knots that you just mentioned? It, or they have a different technique? So, the, um, yeah, there is a there is a different technique. There is a Tibetan knotting, it's called a Tibetan rug. And what they do is when they're making the knots on the loom, they actually have a piece of metal that they'll put the knots around first. Um, which gives it a little bit more of a thicker look and texture. Um, other than that, most of the, if it's not what we call Tibetan knot, um, it's usually the Gordic double knot. Okay. Very symmetrical knotting, we call it. Um, and the patterns, patterns can vary. It just depends on the designers. You know, you can use your, I can even put my face on it right now. That's, that's uh, very flexible. You can, you can do anything and everything on the modern rug. Okay. I know you do this service that people can come into your store mm -hmm. and they want custom made rug. Mm -hmm. Tell us the processing to do that. So the, the process is first you have to say hello. <laughs> um, you have to stop by. But I mean, you have an idea. There is a rug you like. You've seen, you know, you have a paint picture. Um, you, you have a sense of to design the concept. It's actually extremely simple to get the rendering um, done on the type of rug that you want. You just need to have the basic idea of what you want. Mm -hmm. You can't just come in there and be like, oh, I just want a modern rug, I don't know what I should put. You have to have inspiration. So once you have um, determined what you want, you, you get to pick the colors, the material, the wool, um, you know, the type of different knotting techniques. There is a various uh, knotting techniques as well, but I can stay here all day explaining them. Um, but generally, um, you move on to the size and you determine what size you want. And depending on the size and the workmanship that you want, um, it can be between 80 knots up to 200 knots per square inch. 
um, you can start the process. Depending on the workmanship, obviously, and the complexity of the design, um, it can take between three to a year, three months to a year. How to select correct carpet to fit in your home? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I like to, I am a very more traditional guy. Uh, I like the traditional carpets. I grew up with them. I think modern rugs are beautiful. I think they're exquisite, but I think they're just made for a certain home. You know, what makes a traditional rug so exquisite is they speak for themselves. Um, usually what we will see in the market today is if they have a really nice modern home, you will see modern pieces. Um, that's how you know that the, you know, you want to go to that style. But if it's a little bit of an older home or like mid-century modern, traditional rugs tend to make a statement. Uh, it's not very difficult. It's just, you just gotta feel the carpet. Um, that's why I think the rug process should always be done at a store. The, that's why websites haven't put us out of business because you get to really touch it, feel it, see the difference, see the workmanship. And um, rugs look different in person. You can have the best camera in the world. You can try to be accurate as possible. You will always need to see the rug in person. But generally, if you like a traditional rug, you will just like it. So we'll have people walk in and they're like, oh, we're looking for a rug for our living room. And, but we don't know what style. And you just kind of start, you know, I'll tell them, hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. So, you know, let's start with the modern pieces. And then I'll show them, and then they'll make comments, and then I'll show them the traditional pieces, and then I'll show some antique. By that time, you can really see what they're really into. Um, it, it's just on the perspective of, of the person or the people or the family that is really looking at what type of feel they want. The, um, we say in Turkish, every rug has an owner. So once they start feeling the rug, they'll fall in love with one of them. Um, and uh, one basic rule, I'm sure all the interior designers suggest is if you have a dark floor, put a lighter rug. If you have a lighter floor, put a darker rug, you make a contrast. That's pretty much the rule. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. Which rug do you like? You go with it. Okay. I need to ask you a chicken and egg question. Okay. Is it everything else go around the rug? Uh, would the rug later and design the whole so area? It's... I, I'm pretty confident, 100% sure, <clears throat> if you're designing a home or a room, you always start with the rug. Because um, the rug is the first thing people tend to look at. It's the first thing people step on. If you don't wear shoes, you know, you feel it. Uh, a rug can really tie a room down. I, I call it the picture frame of a picture. So if you have a really nice picture frame, things tend to just flow with it. Um, and you can, what's really cool about rugs are that you can really set the mood at a room. You can have these really bold patterns to make a statement, or you can, if you want, you know, if you want a really relaxing, like a bedroom rug, like a relaxed, feel calming, you can put something light on the floor with a little pattern um, and just really play with it, you know? Um, and it just makes it, easier to design i think most of the time when people buy the rug last well first they're shocked of the prices if they want a good quality rug second of all they can't end up picking anything because there's so much furniture that they selected it's very difficult mm -hmm. i see okay if it, their rugs got damaged could mm -hmm. be by animal or be over time used how would the repair and restriction work at Istanbul Rock? Yeah, so um, we, our restoration process, um, we are very expensive. And the reason being is I stick to the traditional way of the weave. Um, for example, if you have a Persian rug and it has a certain knotting or certain style, I can match it 100%. And 
Our weavers, we do not send to anybody else. We have an in-house weavers. Um, we match the age of the wool, age of the rug, the colors, um, and the techniques. And I can guarantee hundred percent. When the repair is done, you will not notice it. The guys we have also worked at the Turkish Rug Museum. There is a big museum in Istanbul, in Sultanahmet. So he's overqualified for sure. He takes care of my antique rugs. Um, but we can repair anything and everything. Long as if you don't burn the whole rug, we can, we can fix it. We can match it. Um, depending on the damage, depending on the repair, it can take between two weeks up to five. Five months a year. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell us about how to avoid damage the rocks. Yeah. Avoid so this is a really good question. Um, I'm I kind of get bugged by this because most of the time people say, "Oh, I have a rug I bought from Turkey or I brought from so and so," and we have not washed it for ten years, and. Just because you don't see the dirt on the rug doesn't mean that you should not wash it. I mean, the rugs are very good at holding dust. I mean, per square foot, you can have up to two pounds of dust if it hasn't been washed wow. for a long time. So what I do is when I finally convince people, I show them the, the dust that comes out of their carpet. But every couple of years, just get it professionally washed. Um, do not go cheap on it. Find a guy who does hand wash. Um, you want to find someone who doesn't use a lot of machinery. I, I know there are some uh, companies that do the machine feeding thing. Um, I'm against it because I think each rug should be treated a little differently. Um, but every couple of years, you should definitely, definitely get it washed. And you know, every month, just vacuum it. Um, don't have the brush. I know a lot of people have Dysons around here the Dyson vacuums and um, I just suggest you know every month just kind of vacuum it once and you should be fine but every two years or so you should get it washed okay and it will look new okay how about animals sun mm -hmm. or moisture okay so sun there will be fading um, depending on the exposure so Every year you should rotate the rug. Mm -hmm. This way, if there is fading, if there is a lot of sun in the room, you're fading the rug equally, which you will never notice. Um, also, let's say that, you know, it has faded fully. What we can do is we can actually shave the rug a little bit, give it a haircut. Oh. Because it's a vegetable dye, the top of the, uh, the wool fiber, we just cut, you know, like a centimeter and we bring back the original color of the rug. Um, now, if you have animals, uh, uh, that's an issue. Um, you want to get to the soiled area as soon as possible. You want to use uh, vinegar, water, and Dawn soap. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's uh, don't keep it. So, as soon as you see an accident, get on it right away. Depending on the type of rug it is, depending on where you got it from, what type of dye, the make. Um, there could be, because urine is acidic, there can be a reaction versus a physical one, there won't be any reaction at all. But if you get it professionally washed, it will come off. The staining will definitely come off. Okay. And this, so use the same solution for everything. Have just a little bottle, water, vinegar, and Dawn soap, the, the ducky soap, I call it. It does wonders. And every time you spill wine or something, just spray that thing on and just go in rotations and repeat it multiple times, let it dry, repeat it, it should disappear. If it doesn't disappear, it's going to take 80%, 90% off. And once you get it washed, it's going to, you're never going to notice it anyway. I do see a lot of houses and I do see a lot of people, they put oriental rugs mm -hmm. under the dining table. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend that? Because you can spell water, yeah. you can spell wine, you can spell food. <laughs> yes, I do recommend it. You do? Oh yeah, I mean oh, wow. dining dining tables. Um, 
you know, you want your feet to touch on something nice. You know, it's a nice table with a nice rug. It really makes a stain one piece. Now, if you have a cheap rug, maybe you'll cause it to stain, but if you have a really high-end rug, it will not, it will not damage it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So definitely uh, at my house, we have rugs all over the, the house. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell us how can people contact you and where are your stores are? Yeah. So I'm pretty easy to reach, uh, even though I own the, the, the company with my father and I kind of taking over the reins. Um, I do not make it difficult to have people reach out to me. Um, you can, so we have a store in Berkeley, we have one in San Rafael, and we have one in Malibu Park. And then on our website, you can definitely email us or call us. We're very responsive. Um, and the best way is just stop by and have a nice couple of glass Turkish tea or Turkish coffee. You know. That's a famous one. Yes, you can come say hello. You don't have to purchase anything. You, you're not obligated to do anything. You just stop by and say hello because I'm sure one of my family members will be at one of the stores. Okay. Uh, all three stores contain similar stocks? Yeah, so um, all of the stores have similar inventory. Our Berkeley store has... So our Berkeley store is where we ship all of our rugs to, and then we kind of distribute. Um, San Rafael and Menlo Park, we tend to have a little bit of bigger rugs and a little bit of nicer rugs, because in these areas, homes tend to be bigger and people like to have nicer furniture. Um, so these two other stores, we do have really nice rugs, but overall, generally, all three stores contain the same type of inventory. Can you just kind of give us an idea what's the smallest and what's the largest size of a carpet? Yeah, so uh, the smallest rug I have is like a two by four, like two feet by four feet. And the largest rug I have is a uh, 16 feet by uh, 42. Wow, okay. So 16 feet width, 42 feet length. Okay. And this is a palace rug, we call it. I mean, it's about 100, 45 years old, 160 years old. And I'm pretty sure the owner of it in his life was a very wealthy, wealthy man because to have rugs like this size, it's extremely rare. Um, but yeah, we have all sizes. Okay. And you have a white glove service? Of course. Yeah. So um, usually I never sell anything at the store. And um, usually what we like to do is, you know, people like to have you to come in give us your ideas, really make, really understand what you're looking for, figure out the type of rug, the pattern, the colors that you want. Um, and if, even if in that moment you love something so much, you say, you know, I would like to purchase this right now, we do not sell it to you. You have to take it home, which we will bring, um, put it in the space and just see it in the comfort of your own. Because I think that's the best way um, rugs look different at my store versus other spaces because I have beautiful lights and, you know, it's a bigger space. So um, it's always better to look at the carpets of your space. So the lighting at home will make them look different. Exactly. And, you know, um, depends on the space, the furniture. People tend to really like something at the store and then they change their minds at the house. They're like, you know what? Yeah, I like this one better. You're right. Thank you. Um, you should always, always, always bring several options that you like and see it in the comfort of your home. That's absolutely the best service. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me and asking me all these questions. It was great. Uh, put me on the hot spot here. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you. You do as well. Thank you.